Hello, everyone. Today, I'm pleased to be presenting a paper titled The Agro-Processing Industry and Its Potential for Structural Transformation of the Ghanaian Economy. This is a paper that has been authored by myself and Monica lambon Kwefu, both from the University of Ghana Department of Economics. This is the outline that my presentation will take. I'll start off providing an introduction and background to the study. I'll then talk about the evolution of agro-processing in Ghana and talk about its contribution to um, Ghana's economy. I'll discuss some of the characteristics of agro-processing firms in Ghana and talk about some of the challenges that they face in their operations. I'll describe the policy environment of agro-processing firms and then touch on a few highlights of key agro-processing subsectors in the country. I'll then present my concluding remarks. So although its um, contribution to Ghana's GDP has fallen over time, the agricultural sector continues to play a very important role in Ghana's overall growth, particularly because it continues to hire a lot, employ a lot of people within that sector. The sector is broadly divided into five main parts. There's the crop subsector, of which cocoa forms a very important component. There's also livestock, forestry, and then fisheries. In 2017, the crop subsector alone contributed about 77.5% to the sector. And within this sector, food processing is a very important activity. Generally, the FAO describes agro-processing as the transformation of products originating from agriculture, forestry, and then fisheries. In Ghana, the focus on agro-processing is important for a number of reasons. First of all is the potential to reduce post-harvest losses. So for example, after a, a, root, a root and tuber crop like cassava starts to, to spoil after only about seven days of harvesting. And according to the Ministry of Food and Agriculture in 2012, only about 5% of food crops harvested in Ghana go through any type of processing. Now, of course, this, the, the, had, there's a large amount of food spoilage that we tend to see, and it has um, implications for the food security position of the country. The focus on agro-processing is also important because it can generate potential important forward linkages, like in, improvements in um, employment opportunities and also rural income diversification. Now, according to Okali and Kwating, agro-processing activities in Ghana can be traced all the way back to the colonial period. During this time, these activities tended to be performed on a small scale, and the products from the activities tended to be consumed locally. After independence, however, there was an industrialization drive that the government embarked on that resulted in the establishment of a number of state-owned processing factories that were linked directly to the country's agricultural um, sector. So there were important backward linkages created between the agri sector and then industry. So examples include the sugar factories in Komenda and Asuchuari in the western and eastern regions, respectively. Also the Pualugu tomato factory, Bolgatanga meat processing factory, and the Insawam fruit cannery. Unfortunately, many of these state-owned processing plants are currently inactive. More recently, there have been increases in agro-processing activities, mostly among private firms, for both local and then international consumption. Now, I want to talk about some of the characteristics of agro-processing firms in the country. According to Kwati and Dakwa in their 2015 publication, agro-processing in Ghana may be classified into two main groups. We have domestic processing and also factory processing. Domestic processing is characterized by mostly female workers who tend to do uh, dominate the space, although they have very little formal training. The skills in agro-processing that they have acquired have been obtained mostly through apprenticeship programs that they have attended. Family labor is an integral component of these activities, and the outputs um, from the processing activities tend to be of variable quality. Examples include shea butter, gari, fish processing, flour making, among others. Factory processing, on the other hand, tends to be performed on a larger scale. The, um, it tends to be mostly foreign-owned, and examples include Nestle and Cadbury. Some are also public-owned. Uh, publicly owned, like Fan Milk Ghana. So like I said, large quantities of raw materials tend to be processed um, by these, by these um, firms, and they contribute significantly to Ghana's economy through their export activities. Now, a lot of the um, agro-processing firms in Ghana tend to be predominantly small. According to a study by Afo Kumsen and others in 2014, over 80% of all agro-processing firms in Ghana are actually micro-enterprises. They are not very well advanced in terms of their processing activities, and there's a relatively low, value, um, low degree of value addition. 
These firms tend to operate mainly in the informal sector of the country, with very few linkages with marketing and then financial services. The technologies that are adopted tend to be simple and locally made, although over time these have evolved to more semi-mechanized and fully mechanized methods. The patterns of production tend to be predominantly local to local, and these locally produced commodities are often consumed locally as well. The export is dominated by horticultural products, fruits and beverages, in addition to some vegetables, roots and tubers, and, and palm oil. I'll talk more about the policy space in a bit, but then there are a few policies that are tailored specifically to the needs of agro-processing SMEs in the country. Now, although the information or the data on the output of agro-processing firms in Ghana tends to be limited, we've been able to put together some statistics that we hope will give you an idea about the contribution of agro-processing firms to Ghana's economy. Now, within the manufacturing sector in Ghana, the agro-industry represents about 55% of total manufacturing value added. Between 2008 and 2013, the industry grew at an average rate of about 14.93%. A number of micro um, studies have also been done to give an idea as to the contribution of this agro-industry to Ghana's economy in terms of employment and income earning potentials. According to a study by Ampedu Amayao and Omari in 2015, they found that the agro-industry is a very important source of employment for rural individuals, particularly for women, like I said, who tend to dominate this space. In a 2014 study by Afal Kumsun and others, there was a study of 272 small and medium-scale agro-processes, agro-processing in enterprises in Ghana done, where they found that the Bronga, Hafa, Western and Northern regions were very important for the employment of labor force within this industry. With regards to exports, processed and semi-processed agricultural products accounted for about 86.3% of the country's non-traditional exports in 2014. Examining the figure on the right, you can see that between 2004 and 2011, export earnings from agro-processing increased from about $181 million to about $902.5 million. This represents a growth of about 400% for that period. Between 2011 and 2013 and 2014, we also noticed an increase um, in export earnings from about 2.11 billion to about 2.16 billion, according to the Ghana Exports Promotions Authority in 2014. Now, I'd like to talk about some challenges that are faced by firms within the agro industry. So first of all, there's a general complaint that some of these firms lack the adequate access to resources that they need to operate their factories or their firms at maximum capacity. There's also a lack of facilitating services like good transportation systems, storage facilities, among others. There are lack of enabling institutions like credit facilities, food safety and standards boards, in addition to access to technical knowledge. There's also a recognized low interest on the part of the youth in farming activities and agro-processing and agribusiness in general. One potential explanation is, is possibly the influence of the mining sector, which tends to attract the youth away from um, the agricultural sector and more towards those activities. There's also a recognized low demand for processed products, firstly, perhaps because of the general low income levels of individuals, but also there's a noticed uh, preference for foreign um, products, and that might also impact the demand for these um, processed products from Ghanaian industries. There's also a lack of appropriate technology. The labor intensive and time consuming features of, our, of the traditional um, technologies adopted often tends to present um, a limitation to, the, to be able to scale up operations from these firms. There's also a high cost of equipment and local technology and an apparent disconnect between local product development and uptake by local agro-processing firms. Nonetheless, the agro-processing sector does have some potential for driving higher economic growth and development within the Ghanaian economy. First of all, over two thirds of the total land area is fertile and requires little fertilizer to, produ to produce farm commodities. There's also a well-endowed network of water bodies which may be sourced for irrigation purposes. So the Im implication of these is the potential to generate a lot of raw materials to um, feed these local industries that we have. There are also numerous opportunities to add value to agricultural commodities. So as I said before, there's the export of processed horticultural products tends to be very significant within the Ghanaian economy. The country also has, a diver also has diverse agroecological zones, and there's a diversity of commodities that could be easily processed. For example, in the coastal zones, fishery and forestry um, are, are particularly important. In the forest zones, we have the um, exports of certain cash crops like cocoa, 
The northern region is known for the production of cereals, root crops, and legumes, while the southern savanna is characterized by the cultivation of root crops. The government has also demonstrated significant interest in agribusiness and a commitment to continue to support increased investment in this area. The 2017 launch of the Small and Medium Enterprises Association of Ghana has also been important because it has been established to advocate for favorable policies for SMEs. As I said before, majority of agro-processing firms tend to fall within the small and micro enterprises bracket. The large unemployed youth population may also be useful to provide the much needed labor supply for the agricultural sector. Now, I'd like to talk a little bit about the policy environment of agro-processing firms and how it appears to have evolved over time. So in the colonial era, as I said before, there were some agro-processing um, activities carried out, although these were done on a very small scale. Um, a lot of the raw materials that were produced within the country at the time tended to be exported to European um, industries where it tended to be um, processed there. In the post-colonial era, however, the industrialization drive saw the setting up of a number of local industries, as I mentioned before, and the creation of important backward linkages with this industry. So for example, we had a lot of raw materials cultivated and then um, used for agro-processing activities. The 1970s saw the Operation Feed Yourself and more importantly, the Operation Feed Your Industries campaigns, which encouraged the production or the supply of raw materials towards our local industries. Between 1991 and 2000, there were a number of different programs and projects that were carried out, such as the Agricultural Diversification Project, that was meant to both increase um, agricultural production, but also increase the activities of agro-processing firms. There were a few um, com um, commodity-specific campaigns that were undertaken, like the 2001 President's Special Initiative, which um, encouraged the cultivation of, for example, cassava um, into industri industrial starch. Between 2002 and 2013, there were a number of development programs like the GP, um, Ghana Poverty Reduction Strategies and Ghana Shared Growth and Development Agenda that tended to um, push the agenda that the agricultural sector could potentially lead um, the structural transformation of the Ghanaian economy as long as adequate focus on agro-processing um, was emphasized. Between 2001 and 2015, the medium-term agricultural sector investment plan also aggressively promoted um, agro-processing activities within the, within the country by creating incentive structures, for example, that um, tended to reward individuals who would um, adopt the relevant technologies in their agro-processing activities. And also there was the, the, the uh, extension of certain technical and also financial assistance to individuals who were willing to add value to important um, stable crops within the country. There are a number of other relevant policies and programs that, were, that are important for the performance of the agro-processing sector such as the Ghana trade policy that encouraged the exports of these um, um, uh, of agro-processing firms. We had the setting up of the Export Development Agriculture and Investment Fund, the Fertilizer Program, the Village Infrastructure Project that in, in, um, encouraged the development and use of appropriate technology in the, in the agro-processing space, and a few others. Now, as you, can, as you, know, you may have noticed, a lot of these agri agricultural policies over time have included sections that have tended to focus on the development of the agro-processing industry in Ghana. The country may, however, benefit from a more directed, integrated, and strategic national plan that would take into account the specific challenges and characteristics of the small and medium scale firms in the informal sector of the country particularly those engaged in the agro-processing activities. These policies would be important for tackling weak backward linkages between agriculture and then the industry sectors. It would also be important to try to facilitate better forward linkages, in, including uh, access to markets, both local and international, and also access to employment opportunities. I would, like now, I would now like to talk about um, or highlight some of the key agro-processing subsectors in Ghana. Now these include nuts and oils, grains, roots and tubers, and then fruits and fruit juices. As I said before, a large amount of agricultural products that are harvested at farms do not undergo any process, processing at all. They tend to be distributed and then consumed directly, either locally or internationally. A few do undergo some degree of processing before final sale and consumption, although the value chains tend to vary. Processing over time has evolved from the use of traditional methods like the mortar and pestle for the processing of greens, and then the use of knives to cut up um, roots and tubers for drying, to more um, semi-mechanized and then to fully mechanized methods. 
The new technologies introduced have been important because they have tended to reduce processing times and also facilitated a more efficient use of the inputs into these processing activities. For the processing of oils, we have seen the development of hydro uh, hydraulic and then uh, mechanical presses. For the production of grains, we've seen uh, the, the introduction of locally made grinders. For roots and tubers, we have motorized graters, sieving machines, and so on. And then for, the processes of, um, for the processing of fruits and fruit juices, we have juice extraction machines, which have been very important for um, the continued processing of fruits and then fruit juices. Now, despite the importance of these new technologies, there has been a problem of affordability. So a lot of the uh, technologies haven't been accessible to a lot of the players within the agro-industry space because they are unable to afford them. One solution to this problem has been to form cooperatives. However, those individuals who are not able to form these cooperatives and are not able to afford um, these technologies on their own, therefore continue to use the traditional systems of processing, which has implications for um, 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 the scaling up of activities. So in conclusion, although I mentioned before the, that the services sector contributes the largest um, uh, proportion to Ghana's GDP in the country, it has, been, it has been noted that it may be unlikely, this sector may be unlikely to sustain growth and long-term development for a number of reasons. First, the, the levels of education in the country appear to be more suited to production in light uh, manufacturing sectors. Secondly, the current access to only basic infrastructure may be more conducive to activities of the agricultural and agro-processing sector. Third, the experience gathered by the labor force in agro-processing industries may propel the establishment and growth of heavy manufacturing industries, which, would all, which may be expected to ultimately spare overall economic growth and development. The current situation that we see where the sectoral contribution has moved or has shifted from predominantly the agricultural sector to the services sector may be more resembling of a structural shift and not necessarily a transformation. Well, because first of all, there's the dominance of informal activities within the services sector, there's the prevalence of low productivity activities, and the reduced significance and performance of the agricultural sector. Now, the focus on agro-processing in Ghana is important because, because of our expanding urban sector and the implications for food security. The sector, as I talked about before, does show some important potential to bring about a critical structural transformation of the economy. Useful steps to be taken include an improvement in the policy environment for SMEs. Um, we also, there's also the need to, yes, continue to develop technological um, innovations, but also to make these as affordable as possible. There should be improvement in backward and forward linkages and also the provision of necessary infrastructure and amenities to help to encourage the activities of agro-processing firms. There may also be important um, national campaigns and increased focus on the need to attract the youth into the industry. Thank you very much for your attention.